you always hear about the emerging industries in different countries. But there are so many things that you're inundated with. Learning about them. But it's not your business, it's not something you will actually spend time on. This will be a good chance to learn about interesting people doing interesting things in their domain. And I mean, 10 days overseas sounds quite fun. <laughs> but I'm honest. I always love Indonesia. I grew up there. My dad is Indonesian. I speak the language. I love the people. The people are very, very warm. Indonesia has all the right ingredients to be a great country, to be a very prosperous country. It has a large population. It has a young workforce, emerging middle class. Beberapa waktu yang lalu, Saya menyampaikan bahwa negara kita, Indonesia, memiliki peluang besar untuk menjadi ekonomi terkuat keempat atau kelima di dunia. Insya Allah di tahun 2045. Dan salah satu kunci utama untuk mencapai cita-cita tersebut. Ekonomi syariah memiliki potensi yang besar Tahun 2023 akan mencapai 3 triliun US dollar. Saatnya sudah tiba bagi kita untuk membangkitkan potensi ekonomi syariah di Indonesia dan menjadikan Indonesia sebagai pusat ekonomi syariah terkemuka di dunia. Indonesia is 250 million people. 90% of the people are Muslim even though it has the largest Muslim population. The market is still very fragmented, very new, uh, which is actually very advantageous because if you come from a more developed country, you look at them, you know that they are a few years behind and in there lies the opportunity. People tell me about a homegrown brand who recognised the potential way, way before it became a trending topic. Welcome to our Welcome lab. To our lab. This one is semi-solid laboratory. Can I bring them home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, like take one off. Semua inovasi lipstick kita foundation kita produk kita semua dikerjain di sini. Indonesia, we are the largest uh, R&D center for cosmetic industry. I think it's very inspirational how a homegrown local brand can grow into such a giant. How did the founder of Warda and the company actually convince people to buy halal products when it's not the norm in the early days? It's not right away. In terms of the amazing growth actually only happening pretty much uh, in year 2010. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, between 2010 and 2018, we grew 16 times. 16 times? So what happened in this period? The concern about halal become a mega trend for Indonesian. Hijab are becoming a lot more, and they wanted to lift the values of halal lifestyles, which is basically beyond the foods, but include everything uh, in life. So that's the starting point where we really took off in the market. four labs, powder, semi-solid, liquid, and emulsion. And emulsion is? The mascara, ah, moisturizer. Okay, okay, okay. 
How long does it take to formulate an idea to the final product? Or to production? Two months. The shortest. Uh, but average is about a month. What is the average price? For Wardah or for lip uh, makeup, 50,000. Kalau yang Insta Perfect, mungkin lebih kayak 90, gitu. Oh, 90 kayak L'Oreal sama like Maybelline, yeah. all this Revlon, semuanya yeah. agak... Baru ya? Huh? Coba deh, lip cream Wardah dengan warna-warni yang tahan lama. Feel the color. Berani coba. So this is Warda's fashionable strategy for halal beauty products. To improve the company's image, Warda began to push for more inclusive campaigns that included models without hijabs published across television ads and print media. Warda's advertisement featured famous Indonesian actresses from different generations. Warda has been regularly spotted partnering with fashion events by Indonesian designers. The brand's strategy continued to bathe in the fashion and celebrity limelight. I think it's a very brilliant strategy. We are very influenced by celebrities and influencers and we make purchasing decisions based on them. The ads and the packaging that I have seen so far have also been very impressive, very on-brand, very trendy. You know, they use millennial pink. That's very brilliant. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. This is my friend. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. 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 Alhamdulillah, Mirobil Alamin. Terima kasih banyak teman-teman semua. Aduh, bahagia banget. There's a, another community for women bloggers. Oh, so already, so we have to there, make it yeah. um, more different. And also with same values. Like-minded people. Yes. Why do ladies love Warda so much? The brand also, it's halal. Yes. The is for yes. The quality is good. If we post something about it, it gets many page views. Women like yourselves in the 30s or even late 20s, what do you look for? What do you guys like? First of all, it's, it's, it must uh, have a halal certificate. So do you only buy from brands that have halal certificates? For food and cosmetics, yes. Maybe skincare, right? Skincare for, for me, I still learn about international brand by reading and googling everything. Yeah, it will be much better if we choose uh, some kind of vegan things, ah, or yes. it will be much safe. Yeah, because it's um, it's also also include in the skin. Yeah. Maybe maybe shoes and sandals because that sometimes we have to uh, be more careful. Skin lining, yeah. yeah. If you have two choices, you will go for the halal today. Yes. yes. Fortunately, if, if it's, if it's, same if it's the same quality. Yes. Yes. Uh, the price is similar oh, with yeah. others, so yeah. why not we choose the halal? <laughs> Are there any particular items that you would like to see halal certified? Restaurant. There's um, <laughs> many other restaurants which not has have halal, halal, halal certified. certification. Most of the people in Indonesia is on the middle class, right? So. When they are going to shop, they're still not having a bigger concern for seeing halal certified on the restaurant before they enter. So can you eat at places that are not halal certified? It depends on, on the, the person, person, but myself, uh, I prefer not. When you are learning about halal thing, maybe like shops, okay. yeah, maybe <laughs> it, will, it will make you shop because oh, there are so many things that can make some product not halal, but. For me as a Muslim, it's a must. You have to learn, you have to read, because it's your choice to be a Muslim, so you have to know it. Halal is a spectrum of grace. I think we have not reached the point where everything is black and white. A lot of times, when you meet people, they say it halal certificate. For certain things, it's non-negotiable. 
for a lot of things. It's good to have that choice, but it's not critical to have it. The question is then, how can we propel the halal industry? How can we push for more people to accept it, to take it as something that they use daily, something that you don't even take it as a choice? Regulation may be one approach. So this is Market Tanah Abang. People try to avoid this because the traffic is crazy, as you can see. This is a local fruit. Interested to try? Sure. Small one. So I just bought it, is it? Mm. Very nice. Huh? So, so are these fruit halal? We Must did. they get a halal certification here? Yeah, but I think not for this. Uh, because it's a fruit? Or yeah, absolutely this fruit is halal. Okay. So okay. basically when we are talking about halal and haram yeah. for food, we have to definitions is halal because of its material. Mm. So fruit is halal, absolutely halal. Okay. The material is halal, we can eat it. The second one is the way we get it. If we steal it, for example, yeah. I steal like this, and then I did. The material is halal, Okay. but then it become haram for me okay. because I yep. steal it. Yep. So that's the second. Bang, ini yakin halal, bang. Yeah, this is made from beef. So this is the real certification. Okay. But this one, he made by himself. Okay. To convince customer. In Indonesia, the number of products with the halal label has increased every year. Marketing expert said the boom in non-food and beverage brands introducing halal certified products was a strategy to win the hearts of the huge Muslim market in Indonesia, which is almost 90% of the estimated population of 260 million people. Indonesia is the first in the world who have the law for uh, giving the regulation for halal product who enter and then trade it in Indonesian area must be certified. Let's say today I start a business, whether it's food or you know cosmetics, how do I get halal certified? We have a standard procedure. Uh, the document must enter to my institution, PPCPH and then halal auditor institution to audit the process in every step. Based on that report, uh, the BBGBH will send to the Ulama Council to have uh, as a fatwa and decide if the product is halal, then BBGBH will release the halal certificate. Are there any impact on foreign direct investments, on the foreign investments into Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, I think I have the positive impact because okay. you know you can uh, directly have the, the what we call is the the captive market, 200 million more. Yeah. This is the big market. Four years I stay here. You love Jakarta? Yeah, I, except, except I think the travel. That situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Everywhere I think so. people is nice, and also environment is not is so good, and all government willing to support us. Yeah. What do you mean by the environment is good? Environment is that the investment environment okay. point of view. Yeah. The once the government commitment, yeah. I think they try to follow up the old regulation mm. to the foreign investment. Yeah. So Jonggundang from Korea. 
and Otto from Indonesia. We made joint venture. The major role of the Jonggundang is the tech transfer from Korea. Otto is marketing in Indonesia. You're the only halal certified pharmaceutical company in Indonesia. Yeah, we are yeah. only one. Oncology is the uh, quite a niche market. Yeah. And Indonesia, I think there are only few local manufacturers mm -hmm. in Indonesia, while the annual growth rate of the oncology market is quite big. That's why we decide to make an investment for Indonesia only for the oncology market. You should cover your shoes. Okay. You need to change your gown to enter the production area. For the more sterile room, you should change five times more. Five times? Yeah, five times. Okay. No, like, like, what, what is Astronaut jump yeah. shoot. Huh? Oh, really? The full recover, including your eye. It's proposed to protect the contamination from the particle and for the bacterial contamination. This is the clean utility area. All our product is injectable product, so yeah. the water itself is the most important ingredient for our product. In the back side, there, there are yeah. filling rooms, so we filled our product with liquid foam mm. in the buyer, and, and then... inside of this machine, we sublimate yeah. all liquid from the buyer and remain is like solid foam, like powder. Yeah. To make it longer shape like. We got the HALA certification for the factory. Don't have any problem. Only one problem is from the raw material. All raw material we have to import. Okay, so we have to prove this, this all material, there are no possibility for contaminate. They have to approve all process, not only the, this supplier, the sub supplier, or sometimes the sub sub supplier. How much more time did you need to check all this API and all these vendors? We produce 19 pro products yeah. in this factory. Yeah. For the around 10 products, we just finished around two months. Yeah. It's very fast. And for the other... Two months is really fast. Abnormally yeah. fast because you, we, <laughs> I'm Korean, right? Yeah. We, are, we are Korean company, so everything is fast. Now, because of that, it's important. And then this is the source. Can I give you the first one? <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. It's a good taste? Wow. Mm -hmm. Is it delicious? Mm. Ah, okay, thank you. How often do you travel? I think two times or three times in a month in order to sell the marketing of the, our oncology product. I used to go to Bandu and also Smarang and also Surabaya, also Medan. Even the Arche. How big is the oncology market, the halal oncology market in Indonesia? Then? In Indonesia, I think 250 million yeah. US dollar. Wow. Uh, our market target 30% after five years. But you're the only company, why not go for 100%? Uh, the, because of the, uh, still the local manufacturing yeah. is existing. Yes, they are quite uh, strong enough. Okay. But I think we are not only to focus on the local manufacturing, but also exportation. There are still no the international yeah. standardization of the halal. But Mui is the leading Muslim yeah. organization in the world. So I think once we obtain already halal salty in Mui, mm. we can export without yeah. any further uh, inspection. Then what are people actually using currently? What are the Muslims using currently? In frankly speaking, our product is prescription. So during the chemotherapy, they didn't recognize our product is halal or not mm. because they cannot see the, our packing. Yeah. That's why we try to promote the, our product in detail mm. to the key opinion leader, okay. such as the medical doctor, right. oncology doctor, and hematology doctor. So they already recognize we also have the halal certificate. Right. They are very happy to receive yeah. this information mm -hmm. because yeah. most of them is the Islam. What was the investments like? 30 
the million US dollar so mm -hmm. far because of the Indonesia regulation. Uh, some of the uh, the product to, to be import will be stopped in future. Yeah. So I think com competition will be rare than before. So I hope the government will try to comply with this regulation. <laughs> so we are going to be happy in future. I don't think any market is easy to enter, right? For foreign investors, there are a lot of regulations. You need a bit of flexibility. You need to be very, very cautious to make sure that you get to where you want. It can be very frustrating, but compared to 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and now it's, it's a very different climate, more favourable. Everyone is still very, very optimistic about doing business in Indonesia. It is. A very interesting time, I think. No condom, no cigarette, no alcohol. Product halal. Good. We can have warm food here. Halal food is it's quite delicious. <laughs> This is part of your family business, is it? What is, is this your main business? No, this is not uh, our main business. Our main business that is the toll route over there. Okay, so this was just an opportunity that you thought was good to to get into. That's correct. Toko yang berani mengatakan halal adalah kita satu-satunya saat ini. Dan kita berani bermain di market halal karena kita yakin bahwa market halal ini adalah mempunyai masa depan. Tapi saya bilang sama putri saya, jangan ambil untung dulu. Sebelum kita ambil untung, kita harus lakukan pojok halal ini sebagai gerbong kebangkitan ekonomi umat Islam. Kita harus mendidik, mengajarkan, dan membantu umat Islam supaya bisa menjadi wira swasta. Ya kan semuanya uh, naik dari kelas bawah ke kelas menengah itu targetnya. Um, my father biggest mission is uh, uniting all the different um, origin and uh, religion in Indonesia. People often call him tokoh pembawaran Indonesia. He's a Chinese Muslim. How does it feel to be a Chinese Muslim? Just because uh, do, do you face any resistance or any no. criticisms? I'm lucky to be a Muslim actually. But uh, I think not all the Chinese Muslim people will be lucky as myself. Setelah saya jadi Muslim, kemudian saya diakui oleh teman-teman Muslim sudah seperti saudara, seperti keluarga besar. Jadi Hubungan saya kepada teman-teman Chinese tidak ada masalah. Kepada teman-teman uh, Muslim maupun sampai yang hardliner itu saya nggak ada masalah. Jadi saya bisa mengkomunikasi. Kita akan jaga dari siang, dari timur untuk membela untuk. kemarin ada uh, kasus penistaan agama yang sampai hampir memanas, hampir pecah itu antara between Chinese and Muslim. Jadi saya bisa mengkomunikasikan sebagai mediator. I go to the Front Pembela Islam House in Bogor and I tell Habib Rizik, Habib, tidak semua orang Chinese sependapat dengan orang yang menista agama. Tidak sependapat, kita tidak boleh menghina agama apapun juga. Akhirnya Habib Rizik mengerti, Habib Rizik mengatakan, mulai hari ini kita tidak boleh lagi anti kepada orang Chinese. 
karena yang buat itu adalah oknum. Sejak 2016 kita lihat, sampai sekarang anti Cina sudah mulai berkurang. Kita harapkan juga anti Chinese itu berkurang secara perlahan-lahan. Kalau ada yang miskin, ada yang kaya terlalu jauh, pasti ini akan ada keributan. Tetapi kalau yang kaya membantu yang miskin menjadi kelas menengah, kita semua akan sejahtera. Dan begitu sejahtera, kalau tidak ada urusan masalah perut lapar, People don't like to be angry lah, and suasana peaceful. Saya selalu katakan kepada putri saya, kita bikin ini dengan satu mission sosial. Saya tetap subsidi kalaupun ini. Tetapi ternyata alhamdulillah ini ternyata untung. Even without the sale of liquor, can take around 15 million a day from the sales of consumer goods and also fresh foods and beverages. So what is the profit margin like? like? The profit margin is around uh, 20% to 30%. And yes. that's quite high for a retail store, right? Yes. Yeah. What is the secret sauce of Pojok Halal? Because from what I understand, 7-Eleven came with a bank to Indonesia mm -hmm. and they actually left, right? Whereas you are very profitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is back to my father's philosophy, which is you don't have to be big, but you have to be strong. Okay. Pojok Halal started with a small store with a small distribution center. Whereas in 7-Eleven, uh, they came here with a, a plan to make like thousands of stores. Yeah. They invested in the central kitchen, they invested in the distribution, and then I think they even borrow money from the bank mm -hmm. to expand. And then at the end, when the business is not doing well, and they have to pay the franchise fee mm -hmm. to America, for example, I think uh, that's what makes them fail. So. Small does not mean less profit. Yes. And more does not mean strong, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Small should yeah. be get more profit. Yeah. Small should be more profit. Yeah. Really? I must remember that. It's easy to manage. <laughs> and we don't have to borrow the money from the bank. Yeah. Because you know, when if the sales uh, going down, you should pay the interest fixed yeah. every month. So that's why Fitria use the father money. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Yeah. Not only a mentor in life also. Yeah. In bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, bank, bank without yeah. interest. Yeah, bank without interest. That's the best. Pak Yusuf mentioned that being strong doesn't mean being big. I agree with Pak Yusuf. I think there is this glorification of entrepreneurship. Everybody thinks that they can be the next Zuckerberg or the next Bezos, right? But it takes years and years and years to get there. Amazon never had a profit until the last few years. And because there's always this news about how people made it, and you know, people don't realize that actually sometimes being, being good in your niche is much better than being a, being a big business. Um, I think it's much better than just raising money for the sake of raising money and growing and not turning a profit. Having said that, I'm very curious to know why there is no halal fund, even though it has one of the largest Muslim population. Definitely the market is there. Okay. But investors usually will go into uh, the, the product or services that can actually accommodate uh, mass market, right? Yeah. Something that you can expand regionally, not only in Indonesia, but going to Malaysia or other countries. Is that why even though the halal market is there, the consumers are there, but the amount of investments are not actually correlated to that. Yes. There are certain things that are actually contributing to the fact, right? Uh, one is uh, the big players, investors from East Asia, Europe, uh, North America. They don't really understand about the industry. They will get nervous when, when something is tied up into any religion. And another thing is because the industry is still very young, so the startups that is in the industry is not that sophisticated yet. Okay. It's not a matter of us, venture capitals or in other investors, not looking into this space, but it's, it's a matter of the the quality of the startups is not up to the standard where VC actually can invest. So what you are saying is that there is no lack of capital that are looking at halal industry? 
Yes. For us, the sector analytic thesis, we are actually very open-minded. If there is an opportunity to invest in in halal startups, then we will we'll jump into it. It's irrelevant whether they are halal or not. What's relevant is how big the market is, yes. what's their penetration rate, how much right. money they can make right. you. The market size last year alone uh, for the entire world is about uh, $2 trillion, right? And then for Indonesia, it's about $200 billion US dollars. It's growing by at least 30% every year. I think they can grow even bigger, definitely. We are right now looking into the fintech landscape that offering Sharia products. Ten years ago, I studied Islamic finance for one of my internships. The basic tenets of Islamic finance are you cannot profit off a financial product, so you cannot have capital gains. Whatever profits that you make, it has to be a profit sharing. You cannot take interest. The adoption in Indonesia then was not as much as it should be. But now with technology, things have changed. I started this at this crowd together with my partner. Very, very, very small with 200 ton. Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. I was broke that time. My partner also was broke. So this $200 is only enough to buy normal website, very normal website. <laughs> the idea is we are a platform. Basically, we facilitate the contracts between the developer and the pool of investors. We try to identify good developers with good projects and we structure everything in Sharia. But how do you vet mm. and make sure that they are safe or they are reliable? My team will do scorecard to see whether this this project is feasible at what criteria? Of course, there are always a risk yep. in any kind of business, right? But in property, why we choose property? Because we feel this is the least risky. Our president has this 1 million housing program. Yes. Indonesia has a backlog of around 11 million affordable housing. The idea is to build as many as, as we can. But the problem is this developer only seeking for money, right? So they just build, but the quality is very poor. Assalamualaikum, uh, dear Etis Cloud Investors, I'm the developer for this project. So what we're trying to do, we only finance the developer who has the competency to build quality public housing. What's the minimum for investment? Ticket, ticket size? Ticket size. Yeah. You can start as minimum as $250. Do investors get any guarantees or any... No guarantee. That's the thing with Sharia. <laughs> but when we give the financing, Usually we take so called the project as the collateral. So that means if the project is not do doing well, we can take over the project. What kind of returns are we talking about? Uh, and in average? Yeah. Oh uh, well, at the moment we're giving around twelve to thirteen percent to our investors. Per annum per or annum. per project? Per, per annum. annum. Okay. Per and how long is the duration of the project? Well some uh, well depends. We have short projects sometimes from four months to six months. Okay. But the most common one will be around one year. So it's almost to an investor, it's almost like a short term loan? Exactly. The idea is to build the momentum, right? Okay. The shorter the projects, the easier to build the momentum. Because once they receive their money back, yeah. of course they want to invest more. So how many repeat investors do you get? At the moment, we have more than 2,400 transactions. Okay. Wow. From 1,200 investors. Okay, that's all. That as of today, we have investment from total 65 countries. 58% coming from Singapore. Oh, 58%. 58%. Okay. Uh, because we are neighbors. <laughs> we feel closer, right? Eventually, 30% of our investors are non-Muslim. Are non-Muslim? Non-Muslim. Non -Muslim. That's very interesting. Yeah, because maybe in the more developed countries, Sharia structure is perceived like more ethical investment mm. and social impact. This is uh, one of our projects uh, based in around Bogor. Mm. The one on the right is subsidy housing, and on the left is affordable housing. What's the difference between the two? For subsidy, only first-time home buyers can purchase. 
they also has to have income not more than 400 sing dollar the affordable is pure commercial it's just cheap it's only like what 25000 sing dollar Buyers of these places, they can actually sell the houses? Only after they live for five years, uh -huh. minimum. Do you think we can take a look at any yeah, of the sure. houses? Yeah, sure. Maybe I can introduce you to one of the residents. Assalamualaikum. Apa Apa kabar? Apa kabar? Yeah. Hello. Okay. You got kids? Yeah. How many? Four. <laughs> Overachiever, man. Productive. <laughs> Sudah berapa lama tinggal sini, Pak? Kita di sini sudah hampir empat tahun. Hampir empat tahun ya. Yeah. Happy ya semuanya. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Anak-anak <laughs> yeah, yeah. ya betahlah di sini. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mau lihat, boleh lihat di dalam. Yes, Silakan. Terima kasih Pak. Silakan masih. Di sini sudah mulai macet juga ya? Iya. Yeah. Mulai macet ya. Jam-jam <laughs> uh, kerja itu ya itu pasti. Macet di sini, rumahan, ya, ya, ya. di sini juga banyak, ya. jadinya padat. Oh, Bapak sama Ibu kenapa pilih yang syariah? Karena menurut kami syariah itu ya jauh dari riba, ya, oh. ya halal lah yang halal. Halal. seperti itu ya. Halal. Karena kita ngikutin syariat Islam lah. Ya. Sebelum tinggal di sini, tinggal di mana Bapak ya? Saya tinggal di rumah mertua, biar ya. mandiri. Ya. ya makanya kita juga ada perhitungannya dari situ. Betul, betul. Ya karena uh, kita beli langsung belum ada, gitu kan. Out of the three basic needs of human, you know, the food, the what, the clothing, and the housing. Housing is the less affordable one. <laughs> For me, at this is not about all making money, but also to give impact to the people who are in needs for this proper housing. Ronald is democratizing investors and projects. His main business is not specifically a halal product, but he focuses on quality project, affordable housing for the underprivileged. And that itself is a social good. This you know, a, a halal component to it. It's a very noble ambition. If you can do good and you can be profitable, that's the greatest thing ever, right? I just got invited to a fashion show by Lina Sukijo. And I'm going to meet Franca, who is an advocate for modest fashion. I have never been to a fashion show and it will be very interesting. I mean, look at me, I'm not very fashionable, so. Remember times when I wasn't feeling, but you there, I was leaving to the back seat. My collection for tomorrow. Kenapa di Makassar itu? Bukan di Jakarta uh, Fashion Week. Karena saya ingin lebih dekat kepada uh, customer. Okay. Uh, ya, customer saya banyak dari daerah Sulawesi, daerah uh, Kalimantan. Oh, jadi okay. saya ingin touching uh, kepada mereka. Hmm. Dan rata-rata uh, setelah saya datang ke kota tersebut, hmm. kita langsung uh, di kota itu uh, penjualan kita langsung naik, bisa hmm. 300 400 persen. If we go for uh, let's say Indonesian Fashion Week or Jakarta Fashion Week, that's good. But it's someone else uh, event, and we just contribute. So, so this event is solely organized by you. Yeah. And do you decide how many times you want to do? Yeah. Tiga kota yang berbeda, minimal dalam satu tahun ya. Yang menjadi masalah ketika saya terlalu banyak roadshow, saya harus memperkuat production. Yeah. Produksi saya harus banyak karena ketika saya bawa berapapun barang itu langsung sold out. Yeah. Bahkan, <laughs> bahkan It's barang. A good problem. Yes. <laughs> Even the clothes that she's wearing, yeah. people will take it. Ini koleksi kita yang uh, uh, tomorrow saya show ini ya. 
oke ya ini untuk yang glamour glamour ya akan ada ini yang setiap uh, event saya pasti keluarkan nah. uh, and uh, sporty uh -uh. hijab modis uh. nice. newspaper ini untuk uh, newspaper untuk uh, persembahan untuk para media yang uh, pensupport uh, para desainer sehingga desainer bisa dikenal ya ini karena Uh, And is this Swarovski? Swarovski, ah, okay. Swarovski original. Dan saya pasangnya cukup lama ya. So most of your clients are now Indonesians? Eh, uh, 100% Indonesia ya. Ah, 100%. Saya belum mampu untuk membuat kuantiti besar ah. karena saya ingin uh, uh, kualitas daripada barang saya itu dari brand kita itu kualitas hmm. yang memang uh, kualitas yang premium. Jarang ada brand yang memang bisa mencetak uh, ribuan dengan kualitas yang sempurna, tetapi akan ada uh, uh, brand yang memang uh, mencetaknya tidak banyak, tetapi hasilnya maksimal dan uh, pecinta fashionnya betul-betul merasakan memang. So this is the show place. It's gonna be like 600 people coming. I think the registration is already 700. So this is modest fashion, right? But is this considered? Islamic fashion? Muslim fashion is a part of modest fashion. So the big circle is covered modest clothes. Fashion. We are the first one who's actually really popularizing uh, the term modest fashion. I do it modest fashion week in Istanbul first time 2016. After that, it's very successful and we go to London and then Dubai, Jakarta. And then it become like a really big movement. Fashion is something which is not related to religion. It's the choice of style. I mean, if women can choose to wear open clothes, mm. so women also can choose to wear covered. Like there is another term of pretty, not just only showing skin and. So you think that the, what contribute to the rise is the fact that women are taking control over how they look exactly. and over their bodies? Exactly. People uh, keep on saying like you're wearing because somebody oppressed you. To be honest, I choose to wear. There is a media asked me like, oh, is, is Burkini about like you want to make uh, France to be Saudia? I said I, no. I said you are wrong, Miss. Uh, you are wrong in translating that. Burkini is a tool to to blend with the community. They want to swim too. They yeah. want to run in the beach as well like you. They, They want to like... be part of the society exactly. and community. And then what's sad is even we try to blend, you still say, are you trying to make us Islamic? <laughs> oh, I just want myself. I just want to look cool also, you know, like you. We want to look normal. We want to enjoy our life. Where's the newspaper collection? Oh, Swarovski. Full, full Swarovski. Oh, wow. The thing about Makassar, the, the people, they like uh, glam. They like yeah. bling bling a lot. Solina is one of the biggest uh, crystal, <laughs> crystal customers, maybe. <laughs> Look at how they like the initials. Yeah, it's so big. <laughs> so they buy for the for the logo. Yeah. They want to show off. It's high fashion and expensive, so we put the brand as big as For the designers that do fashion shows, right? How do they translate into sales? Most of the people, sadly, like they do the show, but when people want to buy, yeah. the product is not ready, or the one in the booth is different. So the market, production capabilities yeah, is like are yes. lacking. The creativity is there, just they don't have much access to to best fabric, to best production. So I said, it's not only about the show. If you want to fix the industry, you need to fix from beginning, from the production, from the material, from the access. Maybe make like a very the whole, make this whole supply chain exactly. visible. Right? Maybe make a center of modest fashion in Indonesia, where Indonesia is the source of talents. They shouldn't see us only as the market.
when H&M and all these big brands enter modest fashion and try to reach them, want to collaborate, they say we are we are international brand, we are not related to to anything Islamic. And I say, what are you talking about? You just make a modest line. I say like that, right? I say, what are you talking about? And you 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 get profit from that. This is what's sad about it. It's like. Don't be too honest like that. You know? <laughs> Don't be too honest. Oh, you know what I mean? Dan Bapak Ibu undangan yang kami hormati. Selamat datang Lina Sukijo Fashion Aksi 3.0 The Newspaper Sari Premium Lina Sukijo untuk Makassar. Biasa karyanya yang uh, dari segi kualitas dan itu benar-benar um, apa yang tidak benar-benar ber ini ya total dalam mengerjakan suatu karya karena Indonesia begitu luar biasanya dalam uh, berfashionnya dalam bergaya. Ten days ago. I didn't know that it's a big booming industry. For modest fashion, I didn't know that makeup can be halal. I never imagined that even medication can be halal certified. Jakarta has changed a lot. People are more modern. There's also more entrepreneurial spirit there. When you open up the whole country to foreign investments, to technology, people actually strive to do more and to do better. There is that drive, that energy that you can't find elsewhere. That's the whole beauty in Indonesia, in developing countries. I'm not sure if they can be the global halal hub. It's a big country. It's very difficult to get everyone to buy an idea. And Indonesia is not as business focused as Singapore or Hong Kong. So to be a global halal hub, I think it will take many, many more years. How many? I don't know, decades? <laughs> what is the future and where is the whole halal industry headed? It, it's all question mark.